Andre Jick just released a video showing how he's using ChatGPT to invest. Money, yeah, real freaking money. So I know it sounds a little dangerous, but considering that over the last six months, I've spent tens of thousands of dollars on YouTube, and my estimated returns are, oh, $13.67. Well, I thought it might be time for me to see if my AI knowledge might help me diversify my portfolio. And also because I don't really know if I wanna go against ChatGPT. It's got a long history of impressing me. So in Andre's video, he's able to show how he could download this app autopilot app on my phone from the app store which then connects to his real money brokerage account and can mimic the portfolios of other people and one of those other people whose stock market trades that it can mimic is actually not a person but instead it's the most advanced artificial intelligence system the world has ever known chat, chat gpt powered by billions of users, armies of PhDs, and trillions of parameters, and literally every single word that's ever been published to the internet. I mean, what could go wrong? So in this video, I'm gonna explain exactly how and why I just relinquished $3,000 to ChatGPT. Before we get to the tutorial, let's take a quick step back and look at the original study. You know, the one that inspired the eight week finder experiment, which then inspired the viral CNN article, which then inspired the chat GPT trader community to rally around the Twitter account, inspiring the automatic CEO to put it into his app, which inspired the automatic CEO to add it into the portfolio mimicking app, which then inspired Andre Jick to, oh my God, he's up 21% in the first day. Are you kidding me? Okay, so video is just about being done edited, and I had to show you that the portfolio is actually up almost $800. So let's start at the source of all this chat GPT trader stuff. But before I hand over any of my money, I know the devil's in the detail. So let's start with the original source. So all of this hype came from a research paper called Can Chat GPT Forecast Stock Price Movements, Return Predictability, and Large Language Models? This study came out of the University of Florida, and it was authored by Alejandro Lopez Lira and Yuhia Tang. All right, so let's start by talking about how this works. Well, it's important to know that the the way that ChatGPT is making these stock trade decisions is based on sentiment. That means that ChatGPT can instantly read and summarize news headlines and then make a decision if the overall sentiment is good or bad. That means that ChatGPT can instantly read and summarize the news. And it knows if the news is good or bad and it knows if the stock is actually being held by the portfolio. So it summarizes the whole thing and simply gives it a thumbs up, a thumbs down, or neutral. And I will say that this is the right way to use a big model like GPT-4 that's a large language model. Because out of the five major paradigms that you can build an artificial intelligence model out of, large language models have proven to be extremely good at summarizing, analyzing, and understanding large volumes of text. But even if ChatGPT is a breakthrough in large language models, where's the data coming from? Is it good data that we can trust in the first place? So for this study, they used three main sources of data. Now, the first one came from a government website called the Center for Research in Security Prices. And that checks out. Chris.org is just gonna be the numbers, basically the stock prices. Now for the news headlines, they got their information from a company called Ravenpack. So I can't do much more than just check out their website. But when I look at their news product, it says they have more than 40,000 sources of news and social media in 13 languages. And because their customer probably does want balanced news, because they're using it for sentiment analysis, I would assume that it's not like politically leaning in either direction. Okay, now the third one, on top of that, they're also collecting a big bucket of news from all sorts of random spots. So in this case, you could think of like a Twitter stream and some stuff from Facebook and like the big news corporations. But if the news article doesn't match up to something that's already in their Raven pack, it is dismissed. So it is filtered, which I think makes sense because if there's a fact that comes out of the news and then a bunch of people on social media are talking about it, you link the two together, you get a sense for what's happening. So they also use some filters for duplicates and extremely similar headlines and then they also filter down the stock list to just large US corporations with at least one news headline every day so you have some good quality data and you know you want sentiment analysis but what do you actually prompt chat GPT with well this is really unknown territory this is what's unique about working with a large language model there's an entire emerging field of something called prompt engineering and this is the semantics that you want to get the best results so the prompt can be anything from a quick sentence to a long paragraph so in this case they started by asking it to pretend that it's a financial expert asking chat GPT to be someone first does a great job of filtering out its results. Then they gave it a scenario. You're this financial expert and you're looking at all these news headlines. And then it's your job to figure out if every article is either good, bad, or neutral. So for example, if one of the news articles was like this random company protected its IP by winning a lawsuit, well then the output sentiment is probably gonna be yes. Because if you own stock in that company, you think, good, we're protecting our IP and we won a lawsuit. Either means we have money or more protection. If you pump in thousands of these news articles and you have all of these ratings, how do you quantify it? Right, like you have to turn these news articles into actual numbers in some form in some way. So this is how they actually quantified all of this qualitative data. Meaning they made hard numbers out of soft words. 
So if the response is yes, give it a score of one. So if it's unknown, give it a zero. And then if it's a no, then give it a negative one. So if one company gets like 12 articles, then you just average it all out. And that's a score that's assigned to that stock for that day. And then they use that as a prediction and they wait to see if the stock actually goes up or goes down. And if that matches either the plus one or the negative one that chat GPT gave it. And I know what you're thinking, what were the results? Of course, you probably already know they're good. So, but it was good, it was good. And it turns out that these chat GPT predictions were actually pretty good at predicting what the stock would do the next day. And when they actually graphed this out over the eight weeks and they compared it to other methods for making predictions like this, it did quite a bit better. So this graph actually shows the starting point where they were all at the same baseline and the actual amount of money they went up or down. So these stocks were measured from October to January and they had a few different portfolio setups. So in some cases, if it was bad news, they actually shorted it. In other news, if it was bad news, they ignored it and they only bought when it was good news. But in other cases, when they went down, they short sold it to actually push that even further. And when it went up, they bought it. So the green line just buys companies that have good news. The blue line buys companies with good news and it short sells companies with bad news. So because they're expecting it to go down, they actually want to profit from that downward momentum. Now those two were using ChatGPT 3.5 and now we're going to talk about ChatGPT 4, which was a big update to the model. So the dark blue line is GPT 4 and it buys companies with good news and short sales companies with bad news. And the yellow line we use as a baseline, it corresponds to a value weighted market portfolio. So basically what you should get if you're just generically investing. So you can see this yellow line, which is what the average person returned during this time period is pretty low on this chart. So that's all there is for the study. But the cool thing is this company called Finder went out and actually checked this out in the real world. Finder is a company that helps people with their credit scores. And some of their financially minded employees wanted to learn from this study and test it out in the real world, see how it does. So they set up a dummy portfolio with 38 stocks and it went up a whopping 4.9%. And that's in comparison to the 10 leading investment funds were actually down 0.08. So then of course that's big news. CNN decides to write this article all about it and they put it on their main page. And I would say like it kind of went nuts. Like the chat GPT money people were like, whoa, whoa, how do we get in on this? You know, what's Wall Street bets? We need something to like get crazy about. And in the article, John Osler, who's the CEO of Finder said, it wouldn't be long until a large number of consumers tried to use chat GPT for financial gain. Oh, he couldn't have been more right. It was like a Reddit community that evening and a Twitter account the next morning. Which brings us to this Twitter account, ChatGPT Trader. Okay, so obviously I'm not sponsored. I have a really small channel. I've never been sponsored by anybody. Hello darkness, my old friend. So what I'm about to show you is just me wanting to do this. So this account, which is following 14 people and has almost 100,000 people following it, is a group of people who are gonna be following the same methodology that we talked about, and they're using Twitter to update people on what the results from ChatGPT are. Now that might be good enough for some people, but if you actually want to just put your money into a portfolio, go to bed at night and have whenever this updates automatically make a trade for you, there's a tool for that. And I've downloaded it onto my phone and I've connected it to my broker account. So as of this recording, I am one of 6,392 people who have done this. And combine all of these people, that's a lot of money. That's $3,761,607 are now invested into this portfolio. And ChatGPT is going to be making the decisions on behalf of all of this money. And I'm just about to add my $3,000 to it. Now you might be wondering why $3,000 $3,000, there's actually a reason for that and it comes from Andre Jick's video. So in his video, he explains that to use this app, it actually costs $30 for three months. And I'm not sponsored by this. I don't think you should be spending $120 a year on this service unless you really want to. Now, a rule of thumb is that you might want to assume that out of all of your money, you can get about 4% of it back from dividends. At $120 a year, divided by 4%, how much do you need invested to make $120 a year? It's a $3,000 portfolio. So as you can see on screen, that's what I did. Assuming you already have something like Robinhood installed on your phone, all you have to do is download the app. It is gonna ask for your password, which was like super sketchy, but I guess that's just how it works in the banking industry. But man, if you don't feel comfortable with that, like I am not recommending you do it, just forget it. This isn't that important. So over time, we'll see how this portfolio does. Of course, I'll do another video in like a couple months or something just to see how it's done. This'll be an exciting experiment. We'll see how ChatGPT does.